Hey guys, it's Marisol with Soul Citry, and you know what time it is. Today's Wednesday, and this is the first video in the series, number two, of One Quilt from Start to Finish. This time, look what we're making. The Live Boldly, bold, the Live Boldly Quilt by Charisma Horton. I'm a little tongue-tied today. So, got a lot going on. Quilt show's coming next weekend. Getting ready for that. But in the meantime, Wednesdays are our four, one quilt from start to finish, and this is our next project. If you can hear my long arm in the background, that's shipwrecked getting finished up. We're gonna talk about binding still, so I'm still gonna wrap up that series, but I thought I'd get started on the next one so that we could have a live sale tomorrow. So tomorrow, which would be March 13th, at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. So my East Coast friends, it's a little late, I know, but 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, we are gonna have a live sale and we are gonna sell kits for this uh, particular project. Now, the kits are going to make the medium size quilt, which finishes at 48 by 64, I believe. So don't quote me on that though, but I'll put that in the comments just so you know how big it is. These kits will be available tomorrow on the live sale. And also we'll open up the sale so we can talk about how we're putting this together. We're gonna use our Juicy Juice Deco Glow 2 fabrics and we're gonna use some Art Gallery Pure Solids. And let me just tell you, take a look at one of these blocks that I just put together. Wow, so super cute. These colors really pop, they're super vibrant, and the pattern just makes them stand out. So I look forward to sewing along with you. I look forward to meeting more people as we sew along through this next series. Um, we'll talk a little bit tomorrow about the name of the series. Like one quote from start to finish is okay, but I think we can come up with something a little bit better. So join me tomorrow for a live sale from 6 p.m. Pacific, also 9 p.m. Eastern. So at 6 p.m. Pacific, we're gonna start and we're gonna have that live sale going. We can chit chat, you can ask me questions, we can talk a little bit. I am so excited to see you guys. And as always, Thank you, thank you for your support. I am so happy and proud of the community that we're building in Soul Stitchery. Our crafty crew is growing every day. Our TikTok followers and YouTube followers, there's just people everywhere. And I am so happy to meet all of you guys. I'm so happy that you're part of my community. I can't wait to get to know you all better. So join me tomorrow, don't forget, live sale tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific soulstitchery.com or Facebook. You can join me on the Facebook group. Um, also, um, I believe on Instagram, it'll be available there too. So join me on whatever platform you're comfortable with. We're going to do a quick live. We're going to talk a little bit about that new pattern and I'll see you there. Hey guys, welcome back to Soul Stitchery and welcome back to One Quilt from Start to Finish, the video series. Um, I don't know if we're going to continue with that name, One Quilt from Start to Finish, but we certainly will be doing more quilts from the beginning to the end and talking about different techniques throughout the way. We'll learn some stuff together um, and maybe try some new techniques together and see how it works out for us. Um, so today is the first in the new series that starts now in March and we're gonna go through until the end of this particular quilt. Um, what I am working on today and what we are going to work on going forward is this pretty pattern right here called Live Boldly by Charisma Horton. Now you guys know I always make a paper copy of my pattern so I can scribble all over it and write on it and take notes on it. I like to write down what fabrics I'm gonna use and so on and so forth. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the shipwrecked quilt that we did before. Congratulations to Michelle M for winning the kit. Good job. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of random. It was just kind of like, uh, pull it out of a hat. And so I don't know what I will be gifting at the end of this video series, but I will be gifting something. So keep your eyes peeled, watch through the video so you can know what the clue is going forward so that you can enter. It's kind of like a raffle thing, but it's a clue within the videos that you'll see or hear that is gonna help you enter into that raffle and potentially like Michelle, win a quilt kit or something fun or cool. So. Um, that being said, thank you everyone who participated in the shipwreck, Shipwrecked Quilt So Along. Thank you to Jennifer McClanahan at the Sweet Tea Pattern Company for a great pattern that turned out super beautiful and that we will love for years and years to come and maybe make again in a little scrappy kind of way because it is a really pretty and very easy pattern to put together. So 
um, we will be featuring uh, a quilt along with a new pattern from Sweet Tea Pattern Company, a kind of debut pattern, but that's coming later in the spring, so keep your eyes peeled for that. I do want to take a quick minute and say hi to Jennifer Anderson. Jennifer put a, a comment on one of our videos from the Shipwrecked Quilt series, and she had a great idea. Now, I'm paraphrasing here, so if you want to look back, I think it was video number... Mm, three or four, I don't remember. One of those videos, um, she po posted a comment and said what she does, we talked about um, in my last video, I talked about not pressing the folds between the blocks when my rows were together so that I could press those when I came to putting the rows actually together to make the full top. And what Jennifer does is she presses all of her even numbered rows to the right and all of her odd numbered rows to the left and then they're always opposite. Jennifer, oh my gosh, thank you so much for that tip. Girl, you are on my list now. That was a great tip. It's silly little things, you guys. Like when you have to cut a million of something, like, you know, I made the Nebula quilt a, a couple of few years ago, and there was like 160 something diamonds that we had to cut. Well, someone gave me the tip that said, clip them together, use your little wonder clips. I have some right here and clip them in to get together in groups of like 25 or groups of 10 or whatever it is that you can remember. And then you just have to count the groups and see where you're at. I thought, how? what an easy trick, what an easy little hack, and how could I possibly not have figured that out over time, right? Been quilting for six years, never thought of it before. Suddenly it's like, aha, I get it. So that's another little tip for you. Clip them together when you're cutting a bunch of pieces of the same size and, and pattern and fabric. Just clip them together in groupings of like 10 or 25. And that helps you count and you know where you're at in the, in the count when you have hundreds of something, right? Or even in my case, like 20 or 30 because <laughs> the, the brain doesn't hold on to it very long. Very long. So um, thank you again for all of that. And we're going to dive into the Live Boldly Quilt by Charisma Horton. And I just want to say this. So you talk about, you know, you guys have heard, hopefully, the phrase six degrees of separation, right? That means that between one person and anybody else, there's only like six degrees of separation. Like you could always find a connection to other people in some way. So Charisma Horton lives here in the Pacific Northwest where I live, right? So the 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 significant other in my life the the guy in my life has a friend who is friends with charisma horton so i feel like i i am so excited to like maybe meet her at some point it's possible you know she is coming to our guild to give a class so and i'm taking the class so i'm super excited about that it's her new pattern called brilliance and i'm super excited to take the class and maybe i'll pay it forward and kind of provide uh, something similar in, in video format on YouTube. But in the meantime, Charisma Horton, like who doesn't love that? We have lots of cool new patterns on the shop website. So check us out. And uh, without further ado, we're going to get into Live Boldly. So let's talk about a couple of the things that I get together and make sure that I have available to me when I'm quilting. One of the things that you guys might notice if you watch all of my previous posts or some of my previous posts is I love quilting on the cheap, right? Uh, or on the thrifty, right? Less spendy, whatever you want to call it. I like saving a, a, a penny here or there. Quilting can be a very expensive hobby. So um, I like to cut corners where I can so that I have more money for fabric, right? And um, there are things that you may or may not have available to you, but I want to make sure that everybody gets it that you can quilt on a budget. You don't have to have all this fancy stuff. You can absolutely quilt and start quilting like I started quilting on my dining room table with a little 18 by 24 mat and my little handy dandy rotary cutter and a couple of a couple of rulers. And that was all I had and, and I made it work. So um, as you build up your stash of things, just um, keep in mind that there are a few things that you can buy um, that are not quilting notions that you can get at the hardware store or you know at a at a at a box store that are a little less spendy than your quilting like 
specifically quilting notions. So let's talk about, we did talk about the metal pin dishes. I have my little pins in here. This is a magnetic pin dish. The pins stick to the, to the magnet in the dish. You can keep them anywhere around your sewing area. And I get these at Harbor Freight. They're super inexpensive. And so I have several of them around the shop. As I'm videoing, you'll see, I've got a giant one over by my long arm for those pins. And I have them just scattered all around the shop. They're super great, very handy and less spendy than the quilty pink ones, right? I made a video about that. Then you have your Wonder Clips. Now, Wonder Clip is the brand name. These plastic clips are also available on different stores that are a little less spendy than the Wonder Clip brand. But I will say this, the ones that I have bought that are less spendy, the plastic is not quite as sturdy. So when you clip them over time, the plastic will break. The metal clamp and the springiness is perfectly fine, but the plastic gives way after a while. So if you can't afford it, the Wonder Clip brand, they last forever. They never, I haven't had any one of them break and I know which ones they are because they're red. That's the color that I bought. And so they, they're super sturdy, but the less spendy kind are equally good and they may not last quite as long, but you get a lot more of them for the money. And so check that out. I'll try to put a link in the description for you. The other thing that I do when I'm piecing, and this quilt's gonna have a lot of different colors, so I'm gonna try to piece my colors with a color that matches closely to this. Um, but my black and whites and my grays, I always use Aurifil thread. That's the thread that my machine likes. And when I say my machine likes it, um, I have tried other threads with my Viking. I get shredding, I get lots of lint, or I get, you know, it just doesn't work well. Aurifil just seems to go good, like no issues. My tension is nice, everything's good. If you are an Aurifil user, when I'm piecing white and black, I use black and white, obviously, but in between colors, I always like to use this color number. This color is 2600. It's like a dove gray, it's a real pale gray. Thank you to Jessica Murph, who turned me on to this color. It kind of blends with everything. Even if you're piecing colors, somehow it kind of like fades into the background. So if sometimes if you press your seams open and your thread is really different colored than your fabric, you're gonna see those stitches in between if you're pressing your seams open. And a lot of patterns nowadays call for those seams to be pressed open for one reason or another, maybe to avoid bulk or you know other things. So that 2600, if you're pressing those seams open, it kind of just fades into the background. And then for my white, um, Aurifil makes several different shades of white, like a real bright white and a, a little bit of an off white. 2024 is my favorite one. That's a, a real true natural white, pretty much goes with all whites that, I, that I've used. So those are my two favorites for piecing, um, just in general. And I do use a 40 weight, um, I'm sorry, a 50 weight thread um, and Aurifil is the brand that I choose, but whatever works good in your machine. There's a ton of different threads, Guterman and Coates and uh, Clark and um, Wonderfill. And um, I mean, the list goes on and on. There's, there's uh, Sulky and I mean, there's many, many brands, right? So you pick what works for you and what works in your machine and what you're, what's in your budget because some of them are more spendy than others. Um, there's no good or bad thread. It's whatever works for you. So I also make sure that I have a new blade in my rotary cutter. Every time I start something new, I put a new blade in there um, when I'm quilting for me personally. At the shop, obviously I've got a million things going on, so I may have a blade. You'll see me cut and go, oh, time for a new blade because we're cutting constantly um, different things. But personally, whenever I start a brand new quilt project, I would put a brand new blade in my rotary cutter. Be super careful with those. I don't know if I told you the story about cutting all these fingers. Um, I was separating them. I bought blades to have like a back stock of blades. And one thing I will note is that there's a lubricant inside the little case. If those blades are super old, that lubricant becomes thick and sticky and the blades will stick together. So um, that was the case for me. And when I tried to separate them, I cut myself. So please be super, super careful or have someone help you with that. Like now that I've cut myself, I had never cut myself with a rotary cutter before that. I'm like terrified of the blade. <laughs> I'm super scared of the blade, but 
There's a bunch of different kinds of rotary cutters. So there are some that have a safety handle where you can squeeze. Ofa makes that brand that type as well. Um, some of these uh, um, rotary cutters are flippable, meaning they can be left-handed or right-handed because when the blade is exposed, if you're using a right-handed blade in your left hand, it's gonna be awkward to cut with. It's not gonna cut really well. You're gonna to have to do a lot of maneuvering, which is not safe. So new blade, be safe, get a good rotary cutter that works for you. Um, there are ergonomic ones, there's all kinds. I carry this one in the shop just because it's a pretty standard rotary cutter. This is what most people use. Get yourself a good ruler. I always make sure that I have a couple different sizes depending on what I'm gonna be doing. This particular quilt pattern is a lot of half square triangles and three quarter square triangles. Um, I think that's what they're called. They're the kind that do like this, like they have three colors in them, like this kind. So um, I think that's what we call those, but not 100% sure. So um, I make sure that I have a few of those different kinds. I trim my half square triangles with a block lock ruler, but I'll show you how to trim those without one if you don't have one. Those are a little bit on the spendy side, but they are for trimming half square triangles. And they also have three quarter square triangle trimmers. They have uh, flying geese trimmers. They have all kinds of trimmers. And uh, to me, there is no company that work, that you know puts a product out there that is better than those for trimming half square triangles. That's my opinion. I'd love to hear yours in the comments. Um, so I'm gonna cut up some fabric. We're gonna get started sewing this quilt, the Live Boldly Quilt by Charisma Horton. We will have kits available in the shop if you guys wanna sew along. Again, same thing. Let me know, I'll pack it up, I'll send it out to you, and we can get started sewing together. So I'm gonna clean this off, I'm gonna turn everything around, and I'm gonna cut some fabric and get ready for this next really pretty pattern. So Charisma um, has lots of really good instruction in her patterns. I love that she lists out each block that you have to make and how many of each block that you have to make, and then you get a little square next to it so you can check it off when they're all done. I love that. Some of these patterns, guys, that are that look so simple, see how easy this looks? Um, because it's just half square triangles and three quarter square triangles, and that's it. There's no other type of block in this pattern. The trick is, though, that there are so many different ones that being organized is going to be super important. And that's where the wonder clips come in. Because what I do is I'll print out a little um, piece of paper with each block type on it or each cut of fabric on it. And then I will start clipping those to my blocks or my pieces so I know who's what. So, and she's, she's super great at labeling, again, like gives you like a grid. So, you know, you know, row A, column one, this is the block that goes there. Super, super easy instructions. Great to follow. Beautiful, beautiful quilts. So this is one of her simpler ones. I figured we would start with this one and work on it a little bit together. I'm so excited to be back in this um, video series situation with you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to go ahead and cut fabric and then next week's episode, we'll talk about exactly how to sew these half square triangles together, how we trim them up with and without specialty equipment and how we do those three quarter square triangles too. So there's a lot coming. Um, stay tuned. If you are in the Tri-Cities area of Washington State, and you will be attending, or you're anywhere in Washington State, and you're gonna be attending the Tri-Cities Quilt Show. We have a huge quilt show in the Tri-Cities area every year. I don't remember what number this is, but they've been doing it for a long time. I think there's over 30 vendors, lots and lots of beautiful quilts to see. Soul Stitchery will have a booth there, so come on out and see us and say hi. Um, I will be meeting and greeting and talking to people and getting ideas, so bring your ideas. Tell me what you want to see. Let's do this together, okay? Let's build this community together. I look forward to seeing you guys next week for another episode of One Quilt from Start to Finish.